Hi and welcome to Planet Diaspora, a film podcast. I'm your host Sandra. Um, so this podcast is set up to really celebrate and uh, track some of the ingenuity of the African and Caribbean community all over the world, um, particularly in the UK. Uh, today I'm on location, so we're not in our normal um, kind of studio setup. We are on location at the Pepper Pot Centre in West London Lab, uh, West London's Labrack Grove. We are speaking to the chair, Mr. Howard Jeffrey, MBE, and two of the Pepper Pot Centre's members. Joan and Norma which we're really excited about speaking to and we've got a fourth guest today we have um, writer and poet Jacqueline Monroe who is going to perform two pieces one of which is going to be published in the black in white um, community collection 2021 which is from the National Poetry Library so looking forward to that uh, so if you don't already, subscribe, share, comment. Okay, thank you. First, let me introduce Mr. Howard Jeffrey, MBE, to the show. Howard Jeffrey is Chair of Trustees at Pepper Pot Centre, a charity which was founded by your late mother, activist Pansy Jeffrey, in 1981. The centre's aim is to provide a culturally sensitive drop-in centre for older African Caribbean residents um, who may be vulnerable or at risk of isolation. Its services are directed at supporting as well as empowering older people through providing meals, entertainment, well-being and therapeutic treatments or classes and, which I love actually, access to IT and training, uh, which even I need. So <laughs> really, really glad to see that as well. So good, uh, good morning uh, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. So um, it's a real pleasure. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I, I, when I spoke to you a few months ago, I was, you know, looking around the room now. I was, you promised me a uh, a yacht moored outside Martha's Vineyard, <laughs> and we'd have cocktails. But hey, that's all right. It's <laughs> we're, fine. We're, we're in Labrador Grove at Pepperpot, so that's the second best <laughs> venue you can be at. Thank you for having me. So looking forward to... No, we're really excited about being here, actually. Right. Um, as I was saying to you, we've always filmed um, in the studio, right. so this is uh, amazing to kind of be out and about, and it's a real pleasure to be at the Pepperpot okay. as our first kind of location um bit of filming and recording so um i'm going to ask you our standard uh icebreaker uh so um so we've got an icebreaker that we've done every single episode um so i used to be a film and media teacher um which i talk about all the time sorry everyone um but i did my ma in filmmaking and so all of our icebreakers have been around film however our last guest naomi ventor um she shook things up a little bit in that she didn't answer the film question she talked about tv series so i've kind of made an amendment to our usual practice um and i'm going to ask you what is your favorite medium film television music art radio and um what are your favorite three offerings in that medium right well film i like film brilliant I yes grew, I, I grew up in film you know until i married kids so film stopped a bit film night stopped but film was my my uh i like enjoyed movies going to it now you could, everything's on tv so an occasional night out but films is, yeah love oh films. good love films love so films. have you thought about your three offerings well loads of films i mean i could think of the one that's first I thought of was Shaft. Oh, when yeah. The original Shaft. Yes, which around the open yeah. up. And, you know, you imagine in those days, probably a bit before your time, thousands of kids had, on a Sunday night in the Odium Cinema. And this guy turns up on the screen, very black guy, which mm-hmm. is really nice to see. Leather jacket. Everybody in the said, whoa, this guy is cool. And, you know, that made a big impression of young people at that time and so forth. He even had his gun in, in a freezer. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, rem- I remember <laughs> watching that as an undergrad, right, actually. Right, that was original. Yeah. And I thought of that. And other films I could think of, like Shawshank Redemption, mm-hmm. The Terminator 2, yeah, yeah. Fantastic Technology, all kinds of other movies. I even thought of Alien, where I took my wife and sister to, and they got scared out their pants. You know, <laughs> those from the impact. But a film like, the three films, if you ask me to pick up, one would be The Heat of the Night, hey, which yes. was a, an amazing film with two great actors mm-hmm. and showing 
two human beings in the South of America during racial times and how they got on and realised it was in it for both of them. And Potier just showing modern technology and solving a case. Mm, mm. And I remember that for lots of reasons. And the other reason I remember that is that a couple, about 10, 12 years ago, I went down to North Carolina from D.C. on a trip with my wife and sister-in-law and so on. And we went to a plantation. And I think it was the same plantation, maybe they filmed it. Mm -hmm. And I remember driving up there and seeing the cotton being picked, it's still there, and seeing where the slaves lived in the bunker. It was an amazing experience. So that film and the bit in the film where they went up the plantation, I thought, wow. So we walked the plantation and this was a couple of hundred years ago and realized how our people were treated in those days and so forth. So that was one of the films. Yeah. The second one was something, lots of films, but the one I remember that was called Crooklyn, made by Spike, Spike Lee. Like Spike Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was different. That was, I lived in New York a couple of times and I spent a summer off took a break from university, escaped from, a, from my for A-levels. I went, I took a year and a lot of family in New York. And we, lived, we lived in brownstones in Manhattan. Yeah. I've and Spike made this film, which I think was a brownstone, but it was in a place called, I think it was Bedford-Stuyvesant in Brooklyn, looking mm. at the uh, location. It's about an ordinary family, seen for a young girl's eyes. Mm, mm. And a bit sad, her mum died in the end of the mm -hmm. film. But it was just a family. They happened to be black, but they were dealing with all kinds of stuff. And there was one scene in it where I remember very hot in New York mm. and you would if you were smart you'd get a key to the water hydrant let the water out mm. just stand it like being watered by it mm. and all those things brought back to me my year my year in New York yeah. and that was quite sad yeah. but it was a good story and I thought what are Spike's better films mm, yeah. uh, and, but a real story and the last one I suppose was not it was Black Panther yeah to show in a way that 2000 and whatever it was 1819 black people can make things like that fantastic movie all the technology there the actors there the money was there so we've come a long way Absolutely. from spike struggling to make malcolm x yeah to now people said no progress can be made but from struggling to make malcolm x a very wealthy person to actually making a film which was far more expensive showing where we're moving to we're not there yet but as a community we can resource and do things which are quite and it was just it's mainstream but it was it was a it was up with superman yeah. as a film and a spectacular. So those are the three films that resonate with me. Brilliant. And they're really great choices. And I was going to say, they're actually, because it's, it's, it's a Black History Month special, mm. this episode. So those films are kind of milestones right. across the kind of film landscape. Um, so um, In the Heat of the Night, uh, Crooklyn, and then later um, Black Panther, which are kind of each about I mean, the diff the space between In the Heat of the Night and Crooklyn, I think, is longer than the space between sure, Black sure. Panther and um, Crooklyn. But I think they're, they're all really important films. And I'm lucky this time that I've seen them all. And I can vouch <laughs> that they are excellent. So if you haven't seen those films, please go out and watch them. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, so we're going to have a quick break and then we're going to come back and start um, our t this week's um, episode. This month's episode is philanthropy, history and legacy. So we're going to get into that. But we're going to pick two aspects of that to talk about talk about with you specifically. We're going to talk about phil ph philanthropy. Obviously, you're chairperson at a charity, and I think it's important to talk about philanthropy. And um, a little bit about legacy. So, uh, yeah, 40 years, that's amazing. Um, no easy feat, I'm sure. Uh, tell me a little bit about the motivation behind the charity um, in context and what made you take the helm in 2012, almost a decade ago. Well, first of all, it started in my front room. I was a little kid, mm. a bit like Crooklyn, hanging around, making a nuisance of myself. Mum mm -hmm. and Dad were talking about pepper pot and something mm. to have it. And so I grew up with it. And uh, they did it because, uh, as your introduction, it was about looking at Caribbean people who were getting in an age where they were becoming isolated. The, the, the sort of the extended family wasn't there anymore to help them, like in the Caribbean. And they, there was racism in the country. They were lonely people. 
and they needed somewhere to find. And my mum thought of this concept mm -hmm. and started off in a very small place in Citizen Advice Bureau, which be which to be next door to this place. Mm -hmm. And then they started building up. She had some good experience because she became the first social worker after Nottingham riots to come here mm. to do work for the CAB. Mm. So she had a bit of k kudos to develop Pepper Pot, the idea, and it started off in a, in, a, in a building across the road. And in those days, people didn't think it was actually on the first floor, yeah. so people can get upstairs yeah, easily. Yeah, yeah. Then they moved to this building here to have somewhere which was low down, and this building became available, and they got money from Ken Livingston, mm -hmm. key man then, and Herman yeah. Usley to put to support. Uh, funding this with the council to build a pepper pot. So it was there really to help people of Caribbean African origin who were now coming to their later ages in their lives mm -hmm. to develop that kind of thing. And how did I get involved specifically? My mum said one day to me, um, I was getting what we, pepper pot, you know, very quietly. She got she got dementia. Mm -hmm. Howard, can you can you go and help them? I said, Mum, I've got three children, I've got grandchildren. I've got a job, I'm a director in a college, it's massive. Mm -hmm. I spent half a day and don't know what I'm doing, right? Yeah. I can't, how am I going to go help Pepper Pot, right? Yeah. She said, I've just give him a bit of time. So I came down here one day and Raj persuaded me. I just came as a volunteer. Mm. Next thing I became a trustee. And next thing you know, Rudy, um, who was the chair, got very uh, ill and couldn't take part. Mm -hmm. And the meeting, I didn't even realize, the people said to me, can you take over for a few weeks? I said, I did. And then next thing, I was chair for... About ten Almost years 10 now. Years, yeah. yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So it's this, it's ups and downs, and people asking you to do things, and also the fact that they're nice people here, very nice mm. people. People have worked hard in this country. I mean, Linton Quayle Johnson's poet, Bass culture. England is a bitch. Take it away. When he talks about working in a factory in Broccoli, that's what they did. They came and worked in a factory in Broccoli, wrapping crockery. Mm. <laughs> And they never got outside. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're just in the, the twilight economy. And a lot of people here have had a hard life. And, you know, they deserve a place to come and sit here. We have a guy called Max here. Max, I'm going to say, is fought in Aden. If you ask my children, who are fairly educated, where is oh, Aden? Yeah. They don't know. Wh where is Aden, Dad? I said, you stupid kids. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's now Yemen. Yeah. He fought in the war there. Yeah. For the British for Britain living in this country and uh, people like him deserve now you know to have somewhere where they can come and just feel comfortable and feel comfortable yeah and that's one of the motivations for Pepper Pot and the mood for keeping it going brilliant thank you okay how have you seen the charity change over the last 40 years wow. and what has had the biggest impact on sustainability I mean you touched on it a little bit there um, and longevity, really. Well, first of all, I mean, it's, it's a good thing to say, people are just living longer. Mm. When I was growing up, if someone said they were 70, you say, oh my God. Yeah, exactly. If you walk in that room there, I would reckon half the people there are over 90. Right, yeah. We had a woman, had her, May had her 100th birthday here. Oh. She's 101 now. We missed oh, it last year. Oh, I think year. I saw that on, on your um, Instagram. Yeah, she's 101 now. She can have a party here because we're in lockdown. Yeah. So I, I remember seeing her and I, and I just shook her hand. I said, May, I want to live old. How did you, did you, did you do that? Yeah, she what's your secret? Me, it's a very interesting, sophisticated answer. She said to me, live a good life and be nice to people. I said, all right, I have to remember that now. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. <laughs> and it was that. It was not being a vegetarian and yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. So it's that. We're living older. So people are in their 90s here and living quite well. Diabetes, high blood pressure are the two big things mm. here and also dementia, mm. the things that affect our community. Mm. We're living long. It's changed because we're living longer. Mm -hmm. Health is a big thing. We do a lot of work with the NHS. Mm -hmm. Also, culture has changed. Why do you have a Caribbean centre now? Mm. Look around you, they're all gone. If you look Black Lives Matter, the mangrove, all those, the, the advice centre, the Frank Critchell. I used to see Roden Gordon walking by here every day, only t two years ago till he died. Yeah. And he was a hero in those days. Mm -hmm. He'd lost his way and all those things had disappeared. And we're left here now to keep something going, to keep our culture, to keep our legacy going about Caribbean so people could 
know more about the Caribbean, for the kids to know more about the Caribbean. Yeah. So longevity, I think, is about... Also, I think we're quite well, reasonably well organised. So we can attract funding. Mm -hmm. It's very important money. People don't realise mm. to run a place like this, you have to have funding, you have to have training, you have to have a lot of insurance, mm -hmm. nuts, and, nuts and bolts of an organisation. Mm -hmm. We're quite good at that now, mm -hmm. at keeping the place going and keeping mm -hmm. the reasonable mm -hmm. standards mm -hmm. going. We have considerable interesting issue about our, le our lease, which is mm. running out. Mm. That's not a war to fight at yeah. some stage. But at the moment, it's keeping people going and, and, uh, and being organised and being, having a purpose for what we're here for, yeah. which is to, is to help our community develop. 100%. And I was going to say, and I know that when we met a few months ago, I brought this up. Um, it, it, and um, um, both my grandparents, as I say, uh, passed away. But the cultural thing is so important because that's what they've, that's the way of life that they know. And so both of them went back home. One had dementia, one had Parkinson's, and they, they, um, they passed away back home. But if there was an option to have them here close to us where they would feel comfortable, where they'd have kind of uh, meals that were catered to their palate and perhaps heard the odd song f that they grew up with or engaged with other like-minded people who had gone through a similar experience it would have brought them you know so much so mm -hmm. um yeah i completely um understand about having a culturally relevant space um to kind of feel a part of that's um, the key thing i think you hit it there relevant a space where they feel comfortable yeah they can come in here and feel you know a bit of music playing they have people like-minded and in this society at that age they just need to feel comfortable yeah. otherwise they'll come they'll go to I, i'm not saying people are well-intentioned but they will go to another day center and then not go back yeah because either the day center members didn't want them here or yeah. they just didn't feel part of it so yeah. this is here if we can fundraise we're not sponging off the council mm. only. we're fundraising mm. we're doing a lot of people volunteer here mm. just come and guy called I'll, I'll give you his name now marcus marcus uh, marcus opens the building every morning and mm. closes every night mm. he lives about three streets from here yeah he's a volunteer yeah. without him this place couldn't run yeah you know we couldn't p you can't pay for someone like that who's he's never sick yeah he never says i, I got a bad day mm. he'll come in he'll open up he'll go you see him up and down the yeah. place and that's a bit of community helping itself itself and we have a lot of self-help mm. going on mm -hmm. and so forth so it's important to feel a comfort place they can yeah. be, which has some cultural identity for them. And the commitment from the volunteers as well, and uh, like you say, it's the regularity, the the reliability of people doing it day in and day out, kind of, is... If you walk in and ask the staff, the four carers, three of them have been here over 10 years. Wow. The cook's been here 16 years. Wow. I was talking, uh, uh, the poet who came, mm. her mother and father came here, and Cynthia was talking to her just now, mm -hmm. and Cynthia was talking about people that she knew who were here 15 years ago. Mm. So she'd been there 16 years. So mm. is that commitment? We don't pay great salaries, we just can't. Yeah. So they're here because they're paid, but yeah. it's a commitment. Yeah. And in the year and a half, and we've been closed it. down. Not a single member of staff has been sick that day. And you could rig in sick, oh, I don't feel coming today. They've yeah. come in and done their job. It's a, it's a community helping itself. And mm -hmm. I think, I wouldn't say lesson to the world to see, because other communities do that, but, but we've managed because we are there's a motivation here and there is a support and there's a, a, a kind of good feeling brilliant about working together brilliant okay so i've got one more question for you before the ladies come in so uh what is pepper pot currently providing and what would you and the team like to build on um when the lockdown took place in march last year we had to shut the building not shut down shut down the serve people coming in here because of the pandemic mm -hmm. We started off, uh, we, d we were uh, on the average day delivering 40 meals a day, hot mm -hmm. meals a day, mm -hmm. via the minivans all over mm -hmm. the place. Mm -hmm. And we made interesting links, like we got rice from the Sikh temple oh, for wow. weekends. Mm -hmm. We linked up with lots of other organizations. Mm. So we're building up. Um, we get Nando's chicken twice a week. Wow. They, they just say, come. Yeah. Well, we didn't come. The man, woman rang us. Well, are you, we're, we're open again. They closed down because they yeah, had a chicken yeah. shortage. We're up back up and come down. They don't want to mention. I said, right, yeah. to you. no, no, no. We're just you're doing a good job. So Nando's chicken comes. Yeah. Harrods came and gave us a hundred Christmas puddings. 
Had you been here a few weeks ago, I'd have given you one. <laughs> we couldn't get rid of them. <laughs> Vegan Christmas puddings. Harrods. Oh, wow. Harrods said, whenever you want to bring members around for lunch, we'll come around. Lots of organisations, Tesco's. So it's developing that and keeping that going mm -hmm. for other groups who can give mm -hmm. um, dry goods. Every day we get three lands, three journeys a week from these companies. Mm -hmm. So it's building that with the private sector. Mm -hmm. Also, looking at what you can do in a couple of areas. If I'm 65, a woman came here, she's 65, she said, she looked around, okay, I've just retired. I saw you on a website. What's here for me? Well, we have people 90 here. Mm -hmm. She wants people who are a bit her age, mm -hmm. talk about politics and whatever. Mm -hmm. So we've got to think about different client groups to be coming here and so forth. And I think that we can do. You know, Pepper Bot has been to, to, to Tunisia. Yeah. They've been travelled. We can't travel with some people here because mm -hmm. they can't be away for a couple mm -hmm. of days. So something like that could take place. Mm -hmm. We're a group to visit. I'd like to take a group to... I went to Egypt recently, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Oh. I thought it was fantastic, the pyramids. Yeah. Take a group to the pyramids, mm -hmm. fundraise and do that mm -hmm. for people who are a bit older, mm -hmm. to, younger to go there. Mm -hmm. The other thing which we could do more of is working with younger people. They don't understand what racism is about, trust me. It did say, my daughter read a video about Pepper Pot and, and my grandson said, Granddad, that was a sign, no dogs, no Irish, no, no wogs. On a street corner, n illegal, perfectly legal, right? I said, yeah, yeah. My, my middle son plays football and he plays professional football. And when they saw, I said, you said to him, you think racism is bad? The crowd would say bad things about you. I had a friend called Larry Cunningham, he died, not mm -hmm. a friend, we played football together. Mm -hmm. He was a professional football, he died. He went to, he went to Real Madrid. He, he was up for sale for a club and the manager of the club, his name was Lee, professional first division club, told his directors, I won't have a nigger playing for my team. He's a manager of a football team, told the board that. Laurie Cunningham played for England. I don't have a nigger playing for my team. And that is what's now, nowadays, they may think that they won't say it. Mm -hmm. They get arrested if they start yeah. racial language. Black lies are matter of here. How do old people deal with that racism? If they could tell the young people who are very angry sometimes mm -hmm. about how they deal with discrimination, racism, in a constructive way. Don't mm -hmm. tolerate it, mm -hmm. but don't understand it and deal with it better. Mm -hmm. The gang culture here. Mm -hmm. Five of my students were murdered at my last co at Cornell in Tottenham. Sorry, I was there for seven that. years. They're just students. I knew them. And when my, one, of my, one of my staff was murdered too, in a very nasty way. Mm -hmm. Older people could talk to the young boys. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in gangs. Mm -hmm. It's easy money. All the kind of conversations. It's a, it's, it's a small percent of the population, but when a family loses a member in that very senseless way, I think it has ramifications. But be careful. It's not black and black crime. That's another thing they're using. Yeah, Get I rid mean, of that. It's about crime. In, in Glasgow, it's, it's not white and white crime. It's crime with the people in the area. But I think talking to older people, getting them to talk to young people and say, there's another way. You have a lot of opportunities now. And talking about it, how they dealt with discrimination when they first came here. So those are the kind of pepper pots all the people could do. Yeah, I, I mean, I like that beca uh, because I think that's intergenerational learning is so important right. and right. kind of getting a sense of histories orally is quite important to pass down because I certainly mm. would say in terms of lessons learned and how learning how to live myself. Mm. You mm. know, I, I lived with my grandparents for until I was 26 I know that's quite old <laughs> but I just it was too good to to leave and um yeah like all all that kind of way of navigating the world a lot of that came from them um with having built um you know what they have here and and learning to overcome the the obstacles mm. in a kind of practical um way that would enable them to move forward Black so. Lives Matter is so important. Mm -hmm. And one of the things people don't realise, you're dealing in, a, in, a, in a, a, a football team with 16 players, very rich people. Mm -hmm. White boys don't know anything about Black Lives mm -hmm. Matter, but they have to have a conversation. Why are we kneeling? You're kneeling because of racism. Mm -hmm. And they're buying into this. Mm -hmm. And these are wealthy young black boys, mm -hmm. white boys, who mm -hmm. they can pass it on to their yeah. family. Yeah. So it's very important. And the last thing is, we're here in this building. Mm -hmm. Anybody out there looking at your podcast? Mm -hmm. 
if you want to come and help, help. If you are whatever, and it, we have IT problems here. If you're a good IT person, come and help us to get, improve the Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Just a day here would help us to do, do a lot. Mm -hmm. That's what you can do. This community group is here. It's the structure's here. The building is here. If you really want to help our community, just come and give us a day's work or a couple of days' work. And that's what I'd put out there. That's the future because I'll be gone soon. I'm an old man. I'm retired. I'm a yeah. real volunteer. Yeah. I'm retired. But I've, you know, I'm, you know, I've got other things. And so come in. Younger people come in. Help. How, how would they contact you? Have you got a number website, or a website? Website. Have a website. Phone number. You know, email address. Pop in. You know, help, the, help this project to come and give your support to this project. It's here. It's been here 40 years. If you want to be here another 40 years, then you've got to come in and, and just give the time. No one's asked you to spend a whole your life here. Come in and give a day's, day's help or a couple of days. Brilliant. I'm just going to say the website for people who are listening. I will say it again at the end, but it's www.pepperpotcenter.org.uk. So you will find an, an email on there. You will also find a number. Uh, will they find out about how to donate? If they want, yeah, there's a, there's a donate button. You, you, if you go by, by um, what's that donate? Oh, what to use? Um, PayPal. Yeah. You know, we've had about 40, 50 donations, right? Mm -hmm. Money is good. Time is also good. Just yeah. come and help us with your skills. Yeah. So, so just um, you know, for people listening and watching, um, it's www.pepperpotcenter.org.uk. Thank you so much. So now um, we're going to take another little break, and we're going to invite on um, two members. Norma and Joan, which we're very excited about. So thank you so much. Um, you are going to um, sit with us, hopefully, and um, while Norma and Joan is also with us, if that's okay. Good. Okay. Thanks Fantastic. Very much. Thank you. Okay. Well, we'll just go to some music and then we'll come back. With Norma and Joan. talking specifically about history and legacy um, we have two members of the pepper pot with us today uh, Norma and Joan um, and we're very lucky to have them we're going to speak to Norma first and then we'll speak to Joan and we have three key things that we are going to be asking and discussing um, Norma um, welcome you have thank you you have been attending the pepper pot for over 20 years. 20 years. But I know the pepper pot from the time it started. Yeah, and I think before um, we started filming today, I came last week and we spoke, mm -hmm. and you said that on the as soon as you turned 60? 60, yes. As soon as I came of age, mm -hmm. I joined the pepper pot. I was still working, but as I said, I worked with the pepper pot. I was downstairs and they were upstairs because I looked after... I was a uh, cook for the children in the nursery. Brilliant. So you've, you've wanted to, to kind yes. of join. That's brilliant, even kind of before you turned mm. 60. Oh, yes. So a big welcome to you. Thank you. I'm going to uh, start the questions. So uh, tell me, how did you discover the centre? You've told us a little bit about that already. And what has engaging with the team over the years meant to you? I discovered the pepper pot, um, as I said, about the 60s, 70s, 80s, when it first started. And I was working at the time for the Metro, who knows it. And um, I said, as soon as I come of age, I will join. Because then when I start working for the nursery, there was, um, the pepper pot was somewhere else. I just heard about it, but I could not visit it. But then eventually, the pepper pot came upstairs because there was a room up there, and I asked my, my coordinator, because 50 plus came into the building, and I asked the coordinator, I know the pepper pot hasn't got anywhere. What about the pepper pot? So when she went to her meetings or whatever, and then all of a sudden I heard the pepper pot is coming upstairs in the room. So we worked to and fro. If I wanted some milk, I go up to the pepper pot for the children. And if they wanted anything, they came down to me. And as I said, then I leave that job, went elsewhere. But I said, when I turned, because it was 60 for the pepper pot, mm. but 
And then there were a lot of young people, well, I call them young because I'm still young, wanted, got made redundant. And I encourage also a lot of young people, younger people than myself, to come and join the Pepper Pot. Support, they came yeah. for a period of time, and some of them are still around. That's brilliant. Yeah. That is brilliant. So this episode is all about, um, because it's Black History Month in October, um, so this episode is all about history, specifically black history, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you have experienced so much of it. So with the wisdom of hindsight, what historical memories come to mind from the last 60 years? Mm. <laughs> How mm -hmm. can I answer that? It's a big question, I think. I know it's a big question. You, some people try to ill-treat Ill you and they use a lot of racial kind of um, words in those days. And I would just look at them and I said, check your roots. That was my habit. Check, even today, I would say, say, check your roots. Because we say, oh, you're a black, we go back where you come from. I said, but I'm British. And I would always say I'm British because where I came from is the Barbados and it was one of the islands was British. And on everything, it was British. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why, but then we were invited here. They came to the high schools and we were invited to England, to your mother country. And that's where I am from the 50s. Mm -hmm. As I left school, I came to England mm -hmm. to look after my mother country, but it wasn't very, it wasn't very fitting in those days. You went through a lot of um, abuse, not physically, but verbally, mm -hmm. because phys physically wouldn't have worked out with me. So, <laughs> and that's how it was for me. So. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. The thing that I, I, I feel, and I was talking to um, Howard earlier, as you know, I feel that uh, even my generation don't really get it. I mean, we've had, you know, we've had con lots of conversations and everything, but we don't fully, um, re it, to, to have been there is to have yeah. known and fully understood, I think. Um, so um, it, it's been, you know, a learning experience being here and certainly over the last... Um, since I left school, I've mm. been learning more and more mm. about um, the community, as it were. So, um, I'm just going to ask you a third question. Mm -hmm. um, slightly uh, not related to history, um, but you can reference anything you think is relevant. As a member of Pepper Pot Centre, um, since you turned 60... How would you describe it to a stranger? The Pepper Pot is one of the best places you could come to, to interact with your, with people of all races. And that's why I, I when I invite anybody here, I encourage them. And I always say it's for anyone because if I was married to a different race, I would expect that race to come to me mm -hmm. and not be someone being rude to them mm -hmm. so that's why i always say check your roots and the majority of us in here was british and some of us are still in the commonwealth mm -hmm. and that's what i and i encourage and i encourage everyone when i was part of the management and whatever i greet people even now although i'm just a member mm -hmm. but i greet anyone that i see come through that door that is strange and i'm here I will say good morning, good afternoon. My name is Norma. Mm -hmm. What is yours? Mm -hmm. And that's how I would greet people that come here. So would you say friendship is a really important Friendship part is a of very, the very part. important thing. Because the first welcome that someone gets and is positive, they will think about coming back. Mm -hmm. But if no one greet that person, not I'm not not the staff, I'm not, I'm not talking about the staff. The members of themselves, if they don't greet another person that you see coming in, it it makes the person downhearted. Yeah, and would you say that's something that the pepper pot does very well in terms of greeting and welcoming and hosting and and? But I, yes, yes, yes. 
Yeah, brilliant. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, so thank you, Norma. <laughs> We're going to speak to your friend of 15 years, I believe, uh, Joan. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to pose um, the same questions to Joan. Um, we're just going to have a, a little a break so I can adjust the mic um, okay. and then we'll come back to you, Joan. Okay? okay. <laughs> a history and legacy, and we're with uh, Joan, who um, is a member of the Pepper Pot friend of Norma and um, we're going to ask uh, Joan some of um, the same questions that we discussed with uh, Norma but obviously you know we can talk about other things um, once um, we have covered that ground so we're extremely lucky to have you thank you so much for um, accepting our invite to be on the show Joan yeah, so thanks for having me big welcome to you um, tell me how you discovered the pepper pot and what is it like um, working with and engaging with the team at the pepper pot yeah I, I came to England in 2005 my husband was here and he was a member of it but mm. he said to me you must go there it's a place where all West Indians congregate you will meet West Indians there so I said okay and I became the next day Brilliant. So, and I met Mrs. Miss Jeffrey because she was here, and I told her I was Guyanese, and she said, "Oh, nice. We need somebody like you in the kitchen." Oh my! I thought it was really <laughs> tough for me, you know, not knowing anyone and uh, just being in the kitchen with the others. Mm. But then I was introduced to most of the members, and they were so friendly. That I, you know, I had a spirit. I wanted to come back here every mm, day, mm. every day. Yes, mm. brilliant. That's great, and I like that 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 you you wanted to come back the next day and the next yes, day yes, because yes, 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 everyone yes. was so kind mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. welcoming. And I think that's something that um, Norma was saying as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, the episode is about history more generally mm -hmm. um, and about black history. And I mm -hmm. wanted to know um, a little bit about um, the things you can remember in hindsight um, that may be even relevant today, historical things. So um, mm. with the wisdom of how hindsight, what historical memories come to mind from over the last, uh, you know, it could be 60 years, it, it could mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. when you were, um, did you say Guyana? Yes. It could be a, it still in Guyana or it could even be, be since you've been here. So any kind of historical events that you remember? Well, we, we talk, we're we here talking about the pepper pot and I have kind memories. Coming to the pepper pot makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Not only meeting people, but I attended most of the classes mm -hmm. that they have here. Like I help in the kitchen. I organized a fashion show here once. Oh, that sounds right. brilliant. <laughs> and then we, I, I organized a sewing class. Yeah. I've, I've mm -hmm. seen you've got a, some Singer sewing machines. Yes, Wonderful. Yes. My gran used to have one of those. Yes, those were donated to us by a, a, a gentleman who used to come here. And um, I organized crochet classes. Yeah, again. And I also brilliant. attended those classes, mm -hmm. right? And most of all, what I remember about the Pepper Pot is trips to the seaside. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to the seaside and you're there and you meet other people and they're from other clubs and you invite them to the Pepper Pot and, you know, it's nice having strangers visiting and all that. But Pepper Pot has a lot of memories for me. That's why I come here every day. Mm. Because I don't only like meeting people. I like helping people. Mm -hmm. And if they come, I say, would you like to join a class? Would you like to do a crochet? Or that? You know, and that's how we organize it. And most of all, I should say, people enjoy the meals here. Mm. Yeah. So, so people enjoy the meals because I don't think we've mm. talked about the meals specifically. So the meals are 
what what what's your favorite what's your favorite dinner oh favorite dinner is we we do all sorts of sometimes we we do guyana pepper pot mm -hmm. we do baking mm -hmm. we, you know the cakes people like the cakes mm -hmm. and even people who visit if they come here once and they have a nice meal that day mm -hmm. they always come back with yeah them, but yeah yeah that's that's lovely yeah that's yeah. lovely and really e kind of good memories yes, yes. that you've highlighted mm -hmm. um okay i've got one more question i believe mm -hmm. i'm just gonna flip over so and i asked this to your good friend uh norma so <laughs> um <laughs> Finally, how would you describe the pepper pot to a stranger? Let's say even if you you had like a few like a minute in the lift, and someone asked you, and you mm -hmm. had to tell them about the the pepper pot, what would you say? I'll invite them to come. Yeah. I'll invite them to have lunch, mm -hmm. and I'll invite them to the classes that they mm -hmm. have, which is very interesting. A lot of people come here because they have memories of classes that you know they used to do mm -hmm. and they bring their friends mm. and at christmas time there's a lovely christmas party here mm. Mm. nobody wants to miss it it's the best thing that happens it's on the calendar the yes yeah yes and i heard you talk about crochet mm -hmm. and um sewing yeah, teach them everything. and um i think obviously you talked about cooking yes. i think you i believe oh in trips to the seaside right oh wow mm -hmm. sounds amazing thank you so much mm -hmm. for sitting with us and answering so, uh, these questions um it, it just sounds i i really want to come and take part in the classes i used to do crochet with my mom oh that's <laughs> good. i used to do crochet yes, somebody else um, who knows yes. crochet. <laughs> and so i used yes. to do crochet mm -hmm. probably i was really into it when i was about nine but nine and ten i was really into it mm. but um also my gran used to be a s my great grandmother used to be a seamstress oh, yes, yes. Mm. so she was a seamstress and my grand learned a lot from her so she used to make me all my kind of flannel when i came to england in the mid 80s 1984 mm -hmm. my gran who was still back home uh, made me all my flannel pajamas and she made me um night dresses or you know cause wow. And and these skills, I think, th you know, these these are valuable skills yeah, that people are getting yes. back into now. Yeah, it's right. But um, you know, for a while, I th I feel like, you know, that people weren't really kind of doing the craftsmanship in the kind of fabrics. Yes, you're um, not a craft. But yes, but it's it's becoming kind of popular again. Right. So um, one last question before we invite uh, Jackie to come and read her poem. Um, is about the IT classes. I am not very good at IT, but I was I could type from home, but my tutor used to punch me in the back with the ruler to sit straight, you know, because she said you you know you have to be like this. And as soon as I go in front of the machine, mm. my body freeze even now mm. at my tender age, and it still I freeze so. Now that you, I see the young people doing it and they can lie on, you know, and do things, I'm trying to do it again. I even got my bus pass last year. Oh, what did you do online? By doing <laughs> Oh, wow, did you? You're oyster. I got my bus pass by doing it online with my tutor, Maxine. Oh, brilliant. I was, I was so proud of myself. I got it. That's brilliant. That's so and good. I would like to do a lot more, but... We've, we're stuck at the moment so it's something that I would really love and even the sewing class because mm -hmm. I've got a lovely African print that I started to make and then we closed down yeah because of COVID so yeah. it's half done it's half done still mm -hmm. and I want so I don't even remember who gave it to me it was a gift yeah oh I do love the African prints they're really beautiful yeah, it's a nice one someone was there and they yeah. went home and they brought it back for me beautiful so, Joan, how are you with the IT classes? Do you oh, I learned most of my IT here. Yeah. And um, I'm very proud. My, my, my children, sometimes they quiz me. Mom, can you do this? Can you do this? I say, yes, I can. 
Brilliant. You know, but some, some of the things I've learned, I've forgotten. So if yes. you've got IT skills, listeners, people watching, you need to get down here and, and you know, contribute to some of the IT knowledge that's been shared mm. at, at Pepperpot Centre, I think. Mm -hmm. I used to teach, I went through, mm -hmm. I taught, taught IT for a year, actually, mm -hmm. when I first started teaching. Um, but I, but everything has changed a lot. But in terms of like some of the basics, yes. you know, I, I would definitely do an IT class one day or a couple. So, um, but if mm. there's anyone also out there that's got lots of kind mm. of expertise in that area, that would be valued. So, yes, come yeah. down. Joan and yeah. Norma are here mm -hmm. to um, you know welcome you. So yes. yeah. Can anyway. I say one more? Thing? Yeah, of course. Um, at, at least. Every one of the pepper pot was very sad when Mrs. Jeffrey passed. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, really yes really because mm -hmm. she was really the person who used to instigate us to do this and to help with that. And, mm -hmm. you know, she encouraged you. Mm -hmm. And yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. If we miss her, we miss her at the pepper pot. But the majority of her team has passed on. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So how important do you feel, and just to add on to what you've said, how important do you think, you know, teamwork and pulling in together and the kind of of people, because there's a real community spirit here. I mean, you can feel yes. it when you walk in, as soon as yes, you walk yes. in, you can feel it. It's welcoming. Mm -hmm. There's a real community spirit. There's a real sense of teamwork that everyone is kind of in it together, which I feel outside of the building. I used to live locally, so mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of that around. So it's it, it's something that you can feel. Um, how important do you think that kind of togetherness and teamwork is to us as a whole? Well, I think everyone experiences that. You know, they they like the spirit here. Mm -hmm. They come, they always want to come back. Mm -hmm. And I think what we have here is real friendship. People look out for each other. Mm -hmm. If you don't come to the airport one day, they'll call and ask, you know, how are you today and missing and you know wonderful and i think that's really important i think the idea of having people watching looking out for you because yes. it's so important it gives them an understanding yeah from our great beyond whoever we may worship but there's one being that will look after all of us yeah and that's my faith mm -hmm. brilliant thank you so much it's been a real pleasure speaking to you and again, it, I always say this, and but there, there's so much left unsaid and so yes. much we could talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been wonderful to have, a, even though this limited time with you, um, to talk about, um, you know, why the, why Pepper Pot is special to you and around kind of, you know, you, you need someone to kind of look out for you. You need a sense mm -hmm. of community. I need a sense of community. And I think we all do. And if, if the last year and a half, has taught us anything. It's yes, taught us how much we depend on each other, on each other. Um, and how important that is. So mm -hmm. thank you again. So we're just mm -hmm. going to go to a little break now, mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to invite our poet over, um, Jacqueline Monroe, whose parents used to come to the Pepper Pot. So she's mm -hmm. going to um, share two poems with us that are um, specifically relevant to this episode and Black History Month. Mm -hmm. Thank you. which is a Black History Month special at um, Pepper Pot Centre in Labrick Grove, uh, just under the Westway. We've had the privilege of talking to the Chair, chair of Trustees, uh, Mr Howard Jeffrey, MBE, along with two members of the centre, uh, Norma and Joan. Uh, now we've got a special guest coming in. Um, her name's Jacqueline Monroe. She, she's a writer and poet, uh, and she's having uh, one of her poems recognised by the National Poetry Library um, in an up-and-coming book, which I believe is going to be um, released next month. Um, it's called Black and White Community Collection. Jackie will share three poems with us today. Oh, that's right. So welcome, Jackie. Hello there. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to talk about the poems, um, and it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Um, but... 
but I wanted to talk firstly about your connection with Pepperpot Centre. Okay. Connection with Pepperpot. My my parents came here. Mm. Um, my mum, she's a well well known because she's like like I take from her. We're quite extrovert and we like to talk and tell people what to do and my mum was very happy go lucky and would like to laugh etc um she passed away 10 years ago this Mm -hmm. year is 10 years that um she passed away but her and my dad used to come to pepper pot Mm -hmm. and they thoroughly enjoyed it you know it was nice to come out of the house come and sit around with people that you know people who you became familiar mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. um get a beautiful meal mm-hmm. which is really important mm-hmm. a nice hot meal mm-hmm. and you see you know it make the place be vibrant around around them she did loads of things i still got the plate that she made she mm-hmm. made a plate and she um, painted it mm-hmm. and it was at the, the seaside oh, wonderful. and she was very proud that she oh she just came home she said oh look i've got the seas i can i can paint you know look i have my seaside plate mm-hmm. so, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know so she she did things like that they 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 went on trips etc and they were just a part of their community mm. their age community mm. where they could relate to one another and talk about things which they understood mm-hmm. where the youngsters wouldn't understand mm-hmm. and think well, what's, what's she talking about yeah. or the youngsters feel mm-hmm. that they know more mm-hmm. than the elders mm-hmm. you know and the elders may be slow in getting it out and go around the whole bush and mm-hmm. back again mm-hmm. before they say what they want to say mm-hmm. but they had lots to say lots to talk about lots to laugh about mm-hmm. um they're still at the age where ha- they have their little party and have their dance um little music would come for them and they would come and you know but they just it was something where they get on the bus and they'll come down here every day and enjoy themselves and the main i think the most important thing is feel safe because mm. you're in a safe environment if you're feeling ill you've got people around you 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 being ill in your home you know you've got no one around you it's going to make you feel more ill at, because you have that mm-hmm. fear mm-hmm. but come out of your house get some fresh air and be with people that you mm-hmm. can talk to um you m- may have something on your mind which you want to confine in a friend who's here mm-hmm. you know so that's what they 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 thoroughly enjoyed the years that they they spent at pepper mm-hmm. park so yeah thank you okay so i'm going to i'm because you have three poems i was thinking we will um, if it's okay with you, we will um, perhaps list here the poem that's for that was chosen by the National yep, uh, sure. Library, a poetry okay. library. Talk about it, and then we'll lead into the two poems that are specific to the show and mm. Pepper Pot. Right. Okay. Interview. She fumbled, and I stumbled. I choked when she spoke. The words that dribbled irresponsibly, or was it deliberately, from her lips. Her eyes were questionable, unashamed when I looked. Was she aware, I swear HR would declare, that under the Discrimination Act she would have been sacked? In fact, I could have sued, not come back, retired, expired my working years. She could not understand the knowledge I possessed, 10 out of 10, 100% in the test. But the words that I heard when she should have been offering me the job, marketing sales extraordinaire, stock exchange millionaire, revenue I would have increased, what she was worried about, what would the client say about my hair? Well, I'll be damned, I declared. Yes, my dreadlocks are beautiful, but it's me as a person who is going to be having the conversation, negotiating, no deliberating, to seal the contract. This is a true fact. Instead, she was concerned what the clients would say about my hair. I looked at the blonde nest that sat in front of me behind the desk perplexed at the black beauty whose qualifications was not the issues whose ability to accumulate clients in the highest position job upheld this scenario rang bells she thought that she was in her right no apology no discrimination review diversity and inclusive acts facts none of that i waited giving her room to retract her question, to react the scene, act two, which she did not rehearse, did not think she needed to converse. 
I smiled. I looked at the time, it was only quarter to nine. She clocked that I was looking at my watch. Was she really waiting for an answer to the question that she posed? My natural dreadlocks was the issue. It had become the main suspect of this crime. Was she trying to assimilate? I was not going to entertain this and articulately I spoke. Obviously, I'm not, I am too good for this role. A black woman's hair has exceeded all expectations beyond your wit, beyond the categories, your boxes of questions that you tick. Thank you for a very interesting interview. One of the best, in fact, as I am intrigued that someone of your calibre is still employed here. I wonder what your HR, or more interestingly, your CEO, would think of that. Goodbye. I look forward to the letter in the post with my results of the interview. And don't forget to include the feedback. I look forward to that most. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, thank you so much for listening. Some of you watching even uh, our new episode of Planet Diaspora. This one concentrating on philanthropy, history and legacy. We were at the Pepperpot Centre, which is in West London, in Labrook Grove, under the Westway. We spent some time with um, the Chair of Trustees, uh, Mr. Howard Jeffrey, MBE, and two of, of the members, Norma and Joan. We also had um, the pleasure of listening to Jacqueline Monroe. Um, what I'd like to tell you is that we are going to be on iTunes, Spotify, Google and Anchor and uh, this filmed episode is on YouTube so please do comment um, and engage with us, share it um, with your friends or, or and on your social media and very important please subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. Okay thank you again for listening and um, giving us your time and um, we will see you next episode where we're talking about um, autism and ADHD. Thank you.